February 25th polls plot against Obi. Labour Party thickened. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Mr. Peter Obi, Labour Party presidential candidate in the recently concluded general elections, had repeatedly vowed in the course of his campaign to dismantle what he described as a structure of criminal holding Nigeria to ransom. But if the former Anambra State governor, who eventually came third in the result announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, ANEC, had any illusions about how deeply entrenched the structure is set to dismantle ease and how difficult it would be to dismantle recent development would have cleared such illusions. Not only did the structure eventually ensure that he failed to win the presidential election, which many observers said fell short of expectations, he now has personal safety and the survival of his party to worry about amid what looks like a well detailed plot to bring him down with the possible intention of forcing him to abandon the legal challenge he mounted against Bola Tenembu, the declared winner of the election, his party, the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC and INEC. Obi's Labour Party is now a divided house, riddled with crisis, which his supporters say is being orchestrated by the ruling All Progressive Congress and Bola to enable the president elect, but which the ruling party has denied, asking the party to carry its cross. Recall that on Thursday, persist seven members of the party National Working Committee, NWC, installed the National Vice Chairman South, Lamide Bashar Apapa, as the acting chairman of the party, following a court order restraining Julius Abude from priding himself as chairman. Abapa, who sent trans into the fray, rattled Obi supporters, who accused him of being used by the All Progressive Congress and Tinubu to destroy the party and undermine Obi's legal challenge against the outcome of the presidential election, has continued to take decisions on behalf of the party. He has since reversed... He has since reversed the suspension of members who were suspended by the Aburo led National Working Committee over alleged anti party activities, and what many say is part of a wider strategy of bringing the party down. Political bokenas surfaced from everywhere, seeking to rip from where they did not sow, said Prince Kennedy Ahanotu, acting national leader of the party, who alleged that the relentless attack on his leadership targeted at destabilizing it was the handwork of the All Progressive Congress. The first crisis was when the former deputy national chairman, Kalista Sukafo, whose tenure has long elapsed, suddenly resurfaced and attempted to hijack the leadership, but that was resisted, he said. The court punctured all his antics and permanently shut his evil enterprises. However, all hell was let loose when, at the formation of the Labour Party's presidential campaign council, the name of the then National Publicity Secretary, Abayame Arabambi, did not appear as the head of the media and publicity of the PCC. That did not sit or sink well with him. All his efforts to force his way through were unsuccessful as his treacherous past manifested vividly and spoke against him. He then resorted to declaring war against the party and the leadership. Ahanotu further alleged that the party members who did not share the vision and the mission for a new Nigeria unfortunately played into the hands of desperate politicians, especially those of the all-progressive Congress talked to stoke crisis within the Labour Party in order to derail the party from pursuing its stolen mandate. Yet, while the Labour Party continues to fight internal battles, Obi himself is facing mounting personal upheaval. His phone lines, as he said, have been blocked by security operatives. His movement tracked and lately is as a match that his identity may also have been duplicated for possible ulterior motive. The Labour Party candidate returned detention by the immigration officials, officials at a Heathrow airport in London on April 7th, Good Friday, over what the officials later described as a duplication of his identity. It gave an indication of possible use of his identity to commit crimes in the United Kingdom, with likely intention of setting him up. Reacting to a London incident in the statement on Wednesday, Diron Onifa, the head of the Obidati Media Office, noted that it took the intervention of Nigerians and other Africans who began to agitate for the airport officials to reveal the reason for holding the Anambra, the former Anambra governor. The immigration officials who were also taken aback at the reaction of the people were forced to reveal that Obi was being questioned for a duplication offence, meaning that someone has been impersonating him in London, he said. The high implication of the offence is that the impersonator could be committing all kinds of weighty crimes and other dubious acts and it will be recorded in Obi's name. 
Since the impersonator is still at large, the scenario is unimaginable as Obi could be implicated in a series of forbidden acts and even be framed in a manner that could be a huge embarrassment to him, his family, his party, the obedient movement, and indeed Nigeria, where he currently and indisputably remains the conscience of the people. He further said, Obi that media office recalls that our principal has been under all kinds of attacks since the February 25th, 2023 presidential election, in which, as the standard bearer of the Labour Party, he put up an outstanding show coming third out of 18 contestants as announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Even though his supporters and many other election watchers, including international observers, believe very strongly that he won the election but was manipulated out. Since he was told to go to court if he feels strongly about the election, which all international monitors caused to be a flawed and full of imperfections and accepted, there have been severe attacks on him from all corners. Even the federal government who directed him to go to court even dispatched the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, to the United States to send to demarket him and accuse him of treason. Obi's telephone line was also blocked when they were possibly looking for information to portray him badly before a section of a country who had voted for him massively. Sincerely, on top of this would be to be matter. This entire me. Now, in a say if you know dissatisfied, make him go court. He go court when I start to attack him. Something fishy is really going on. All right, on this note, we've come to the end of the news. We say thank you for turning in to listen. Until I come, you'll be next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.